next topic is cell division cell division is an essential process for the growth and development of all living organisms there are two types of cell divisions mainly mitosis and meiosis mitosis is the process by which a single cell divides into two identical data cells while meiosis is the process by which a specialized cell called gametes are produced for sexual reproduction the cell cycle is a sequence of events that a cell undergoes from its formation until it divides into two daughter cells then mitosis is divided into four stages like prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase meiosis is a process by which specialized cells called gametes are produced for sexual reproduction the cell cycle is the sequence of events that a cell undergoes from its formation until it divides into two daughter cells mitosis is divided into four stages like prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase in prophase the chromatin condenses into visible chromosomes and the cystic membrane i'm sorry the nuclear membrane breaks down in metaphase the chromosomes align at the cell equator in anaphase the sister chromatids separate and move towards opposite poles in telophase the nuclear membrane reforms around the two sets of chromosomes and the cell divides into two daughter cells meiosis on the other hand is divided into two phases like meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 meiosis 1 involves the separation of homologous chromosomes while meiosis 2 involves the separation of sister chromatids the end result of meiosis is the production of four genetically diverse haploid cells The cell cycle is regulated by a complex network of proteins that control the progression from one phase to the next. Cyclins and cycling dependent kinases play a critical role in this process. Cyclins bind to CDKs to activate them and CDKs phosphorylate target proteins to trigger specific events in the cell cycle. Regulation of the cell cycle is also critical for preventing the development of cancer. Mutations in genes that regulate the gene cycle cell cycle can lead to uncontrolled cell division which is a hallmark of cancer therefore understanding the mechanisms of cell cycle regulation is important for developing new cancer treatments in conclusion cell division and cell cycle are essential processes for the growth and development of all living organisms meiosis and mitosis are two types of cell division and the cell cycle is a sequence of events that a cell undergoes from its formation until it divides into two daughter cells the regulation and control of the cell cycle are critical for preventing the development of cancer and understanding this mechanisms is essential for developing new cancer treatments mitosis regulation steps in cell cycle regulation and control mitosis is a type of cell division that occurs in somatic cells non reproductive cells to produce two genetically identical daughter cells The process of mitosis is divided into several stages that occur in a specific sequence and are regulated by various cellular mechanisms. The stages of mitosis are interphase. During this phase, the cell grows, replicates its DNA, and prepares for cell division. Then prophase. The chromatin condenses into visible chromosomes, and the nuclear membrane breaks down. The spindle fibers begin to form from the chromosomes. I'm sorry, centrosomes. located at the opposite poles of the cell then metaphase the chromosomes line up at the equator of the cell also called the metaphase plate and are attached to the spindle fibers by their centromeres then anaphase the spindle fibers contract pulling the sister chromatids of each chromosome apart and towards opposite poles of the cell then telophase the chromosomes reach the poles of the cell and begin to the condense a new nuclear envelope forms around each set of chromosomes completing the formation of two nuclei then cytokinesis this is the final stage of mitosis in which the cytoplasm of the parent cell divides to to form two separate daughter cells the elongation and control of the cell cycle is critical to ensure the proper replication and division of cells the cell cycle is divided into three main checkpoints the g1 checkpoint the g2 checkpoint and the m checkpoint during the g1 checkpoint the cell determines whether conditions are favorable for cell division if the conditions are not favorable the cell may enter a state of quiescence also known as the g0 phase in which it remains until conditions become favorable again the g2 checkpoint ensures that dna replication has been completed properly and that the cell is ready to enter the mitosis state the m checkpoint also known as the spindle checkpoint ensures that all of the chromosomes are properly attached to the spindle fibers before the cell enters anaphase 
these checkpoints are regulated by a variety of proteins and signaling pathways including cyclins and cycling dependent kinases. In addition to these checkpoints, the cell cycle also regulated by a variety of tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes. Mutations in these genes can lead to uncontrolled cell division and the development of cancer. Overall, the understanding of mitosis and regulation of cell cycle is critical for understanding the normal process of cell division and development as well as the development of diseases such as cancer. Then meiosis regulation and steps. Meiosis is a specialized cell division process that occurs in sexually reproducing organisms to produce haploid gametes from diploid cells. It involves two rounds of nuclear division, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, and results in the production of four genetically diverse haploid cells. Then regulation. The regulation of meiosis is complex and involves various regulatory proteins, checkpoints, and feedback mechanisms. It is controlled by both external and internal signals such as hormones, growth factors and environmental cues. Then steps in cell cycle include interface will be there. Before meiosis, the cell undergo interface which is composed of three stages like G1, S and G2. During G1, the cell grows and prepares for DNA replication and S phase, DNA replication occurs resulting in the duplication of the cell's chromosomes. In G2 phase, the cell prepares for meiosis or mitosis by synthesizing proteins and organelles. Then meiosis 1. Prophase 1. Chromosomes condense and become visible. Homologous chromosomes pair up and form bivalence consisting of four chromatids. Crossing over occurs resulting in the exchange of genetic material between homologous chromosomes. Then metaphase 1. Bivalence align along the metaphase plate with each homologous pair attached to spindle fibers from opposite poles of the cell. Then anaphase 1. Homologous chromosomes separate and move towards opposite poles of the cell. Then telophase 1, chromosomes arrive at the poles and nuclear envelopes reform around the two haploid sets of the chromosomes. Then cytokinesis, the cytoplasm divides and the two daughter cells are formed, each containing one haploid set of chromosomes. Then meiosis 2, prophase 2, the chromosomes which are already condensed become visible again. Then metaphase 2, the chromosomes align along the metaphase plate. Then anaphase 2, the sister chromatids separate and move towards opposite poles. Then telophase 2, chromosomes arrive at the poles and nuclear envelopes reform around the four haploid sets of chromosomes. Then cytokinesis, the cytoplasm divides and four daughter cells are formed, each containing one haploid set of chromosomes. Regulation of control of a cell cycle. The cell cycle is regulated by a complex network of proteins and checkpoints that ensure the proper progression of the cycle. Cycling dependent kinases, CDKs are cyclins. And cyclins are two key proteins that control the progression of the cell cycle. Checkpoints are located at various stages of the cell and cycle and they ensure that the cell only progresses to the next stage if certain criteria are met. If this criteria are not met, the cell cycle is paused or halted, giving the cell time to repair any damage before continuing with the cycle. Then importance. Meiosis is essential for sexual reproduction and ensures genetic diversity in offspring. It also plays a critical role in evolution as genetic variation generated during meiosis is subject to natural selection allowing organisms to adapt to changing environments. In humans, errors during meiosis can lead to genetic disorders such as Down syndrome, Down syndrome and a better understanding of the meiotic process can aid in the development of treatments for such disorders. Then microbial physiology, growth, yield and characteristics. Then microbial physiology is the study of the physiological processes that occurs in microorganisms such as bacteria, archaea and fungi. It involves the study of growth, yield and characteristics and strategies of cell division and stress response. Understanding microbial physiology is important for many areas of microbiology including biotechnology, medical microbiology and environmental microbiology. Growth yield and characteristics. Microbial growth yield and characteristics are essential for understanding the metabolic processes of microorganisms. The growth yield refers to the amount of biomass or cellular material produced by a microorganism during its growth. The characteristics of microbial growth include temperature, pH, oxygen requirement and nutrient requirements. Then strategies of cell division. Strategies of cell division. Microorganisms have 
various strategies for cell division including binary fission budding and spore formation. Binary fission is the most common form of cell division in bacteria and involves the duplication of this genetic material and subsequent splitting of the cell into two daughter cells. Budding is a form of cell division in yeast, whereas the daughter cell grows on the mother cell and then separates. Spore formation is a strategy used by some bacteria and fungi where a single cell forms a protective structure or spore that allows it to survive in adverse conditions. Stress response Microorganisms are exposed to a variety of stresses including temperature changes, nutrient limitations and exposure to toxins. They have developed various mechanisms to respond to these stresses including the production of heat shock proteins, the product induction of alternative metabolic pathways and the activation of stress response genes. Overall understanding Microbial physiology is crucial for understanding the behavior of microorganisms in different environments and for developing strategies to control microbial growth and metabolism. Then DNA replication and other related topics. DNA replication is a fundamental process in all living organisms that involves the copying of DNA to ensure that the genetic information is passed on accurately to the daughter cells during cell division. DNA replication is highly coordinated process that involves the participation of various enzymes, proteins and other regulatory factors. Unit of replication. The unit of replication is a replication fork which is a Y-shaped structure that forms at the site of DNA replication. Enzymes involve DNA polymerase, helicases, topoisomerases, Primase and ligases are the main enzymes involved in the DNA replication. Then replication origin and replication fork. DNA replication begins at the replication origin which is a specific sequence of DNA that serves as a starting point for replication. The replication fork is a point where the double stranded DNA molecule is separated. Then the single strands of DNA are used as templates for replication. Fillity of replication. DNA replication is highly accurate with an error rate of only 1 in billion base pairs replicated. The high fidelity of replication is due to the proofreading ability of DNA polymerase and their error checking mechanisms. Extra chromosomal replicants. Extra chromosomal replicants are DNA molecules that replicate independently of the chromosome. They are commonly found in bacteria and viruses are often circular. Then DNA damage and repair mechanisms. DNA is constantly subjected to various types of damage including chemical damage, radiation damage and damage caused by replication errors. Cells have evolved several mechanisms to repair such damage including base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair and mismatch repair, homologous and site specific recombination. Homologous recombination involves the exchange of genetic material between two DNA molecules that have homologous sequences. While site-specific recombination involves exchange of genetic material at specific sites on the DNA molecule. DNA replication, repair and recombination are crucial processes that ensure the accurate transmission of genetic information from one generation to the next. These processes are essential for the survival and growth of all living organisms and are highly regulated to maintain the integrity of the genetic material. Understanding the molecular mechanisms underlying this process is important for developing therapies for genetic disorders and for developing new strategies for the treatment of cancer and other diseases, then DNA and RNA synthesis and related topics. RNA synthesis and processing refers to the mechanisms involved in the transcription and modification of RNA molecules. This process is crucial for the expression of genetic information as RNA serves as the intermediate between DNA and proteins. The main steps involved in RNA synthesis and processing are transcription, RNA modification and RNA transport, transcription factors and machinery. The process of transcription is initiated by transcription factors which bind to specific regions of DNA and recruit RNA polymerase enzymes. The RNA polymerase enzymes catalyze the formation of phosphodiester bonds between nucleotides resulting in the synthesis of new RNA and complementary to the DNA template strand. Next, formation of initiation complex. The initiation complex is formed when the transcription factors bind to the promoter region of the DNA and recruit RNA polymerase enzymes. The RNA polymerase enzymes then unwind the DNA double helix and begin synthesizing RNA in the 5' to 3' direction. Then transcription activator and repressor 
Transcription activators enhance the transcriptional activity of RNA polymerase by promoting the formation of the initiation complex, whereas transcription repressors inhibit transcription by preventing the formation of the initiation complex. RNA polymerases These are three types of RNA polymerases in eukaryotic cells which are, which are responsible for transcription of different types of RNA molecules. RNA polymerase synthesizes RRNA, RNA polymerase 2 synthesizes mRNA and RNA polymerase 3 synthesizes tRNA and other small RNA molecules. Capping, elongation and termination. Once the RNA polymerase has synthesized a short stretch of RNA, it is capped at the 5' dash end and modified guanine residue nucleotide. The elongation phase continues until the RNA polymerase reaches the termination signal which causes the RNA polymerase to detach from the DNA template and release the newly synthesized RNA molecule. Then RNA processing. The primary transcript of RNA undergoes several modifications because it can be functional. This modification includes splicing, gapping and polyadenylation. RNA splicing removes non-coding introns and joins together the exons to create a mature RNA molecule that can be translated into a protein. Then RNA editing. RNA editing involves the post-transcriptional modification of RNA molecules by altering the nucleotide sequence. This process is mediated by RNA editing enzymes and is crucial for the proper functioning of some RNA molecules. Structure and function of different types of RNA. There are several types of RNA molecules including messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA, micro RNA and small nuclear RNA. Each type of RNA has a specific structure and function in the cell. RNA transport. Once synthesized, RNA molecules are transported to the site of function in the cell. This process is mediated by a series of transport proteins that recognize specific RNA sequences and facilitate transport through the nuclear pores. In conclusion, RNA synthesis and processing is a complex and highly regulated process that is essential for gene expression and cellular functions. The process of transcription, RNA modification and RNA transport are all tightly regulated and involve the activity of several enzymes and regulatory factors. The understanding of RNA synthesis and processing is essential for developing targeted therapies for various diseases. Then protein synthesis and processing. Protein synthesis and processing is a complex process that occurs in all living organisms. It involves the production of proteins from the genetic information stored in DNA. This process is carried out by ribosomes and involves a series of steps including initiation, elongation and termination. The resulting protein must undergo post-translational modifications to be functional. And let's learn about ribosomes. Ribosomes are large complexes of RNA and protein that are responsible for protein synthesis. They are found in all cells and exist in two subunits, the large subunit and the small subunit. The large subunit is responsible for peptide bond formation while the small subunit reads the mRNA sequence. Ribosomes are essential for life and are the target of many antibiotics. Formation of initiation complex. The initiation of protein synthesis requires the formation of an Initiation complex. This complex involves the binding of two ribosomal subunits to the mRNA, followed by the recruit of the initiator mRNA and the large ribosomal subunit. The initiator rRNA carries the amino acid methionine and is recognized by the start codon AUG. So, initiation factors and their regulation. Initiation factors are proteins that are involved in the formation of the initiation complex. These factors are re regulated by various signaling pathways and play a critical role in controlling protein synthesis. Examples of initiation factors include ELF1, ELF2 and ELF3. Elongation and elongation factors. Once the initiation complex is formed, the ribosome moves along the mRNA in a process called elongation. During this process, the ribosome reads the codons on the mRNA and adds the corresponding amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain. Elongation factors such as EFTU and EFG facilitate 
this process by a promoting of the binding of tRNA to the ribosome and the movement of the ribosome along the mRNA. Then termination. The termination of protein synthesis occurs when the ribosome reaches a stop codon on the mRNA. This causes the release of a newly synthesized protein and the dis disassemblage of the ribosome. Termination factors such as ERF1 are responsible for recognizing the stop codon and promoting the release of the protein. Then genetic code. The genetic code is the set of rules that govern the translation of the genetic information stored in DNA into proteins. The code is read in groups of three nucleotides called codons. Each codon corresponds to a specific amino acid or a stop signal. There are 64 possible codons but only 20 amino acids are found in used in protein synthesis. Then amino acetylation, amino acetylation of tRNA. Amino acetylation of Amino acylation of tRNA is the process of attaching the correct amino acid to its corresponding tRNA. This process is carried out by enzymes called amino acyl tRNA synthetases, which recognize the specific tRNA and amino acid and catalyze the attachment of the amino acid to the tRNA. Then, tRNA identity. Each tRNA molecule has a unique sequence of nucleotides that allows it to be recognized by the corresponding amino acyl tRNA synthetase. The sequence is called the anticodon and is complementary to the codon of the mRNA. The correct pairing of the anticodon with the codon ensures the proper incorporation of amino acids into the growing polypeptide chain. Then translational proofreading. Translational proofreading is the process by which the ribosome ensures that the correct amino acid is incorporated in the, into the growing polypeptide chain. This process involves the recognition of incorrect amino acid tRNA by the ribosome and the subsequent removal. Protein synthesis and related topics. Protein synthesis is the process of creating proteins from amino acids based on the genetic code stored in DNA. It involves two main stages, transcription and translation. During transcription, the DNA code, DNA code is transcribed into RNA which is then translated into protein during the process of translation. The protein synthesis is essential for the growth and maintenance of cells and any errors or abnormalities in this process can lead to a variety of diseases. Then ribosomes are the organelles responsible for protein synthesis. They are composed of RNA and proteins and are found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Ribosomes read the genetic code stored in mRNA or messenger RNA and use this information to assemble amino acids into a polypeptide chain which forms the basis of protein. Then initiation complex. The initiation complex is a complex of proteins that forms at the start of translation. It includes the mRNA and small and large ribosomal subunits and various initiation factors that help to position the ribosome and the mRNA correctly. Then initiation factors. Initiation factors are proteins that help to assemble the initiation complex and start the process of translation. There are several initiation factors involved in this process including ELF4, 2, ELF3 and ELF4 elongation. During the elongation phase of translation, the ribosome reads the genetic code in the mRNA and adds amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain. This process is catalyzed by elongation factors which help to move the ribosome along the mRNA and position the correct tRNA or transfer RNA to the A site of the ribosome. Then termination. The termination phase of translation occurs when the ribosome reaches a stop codon in the mRNA. This signals the end of protein synthesis and the ribosome disassembles, releasing the newly synthesized protein. Then genetic code. The genetic code is the set of rules that determines how the genetic information stored in DNA is translated into proteins. It is a triplet code, meaning that each codon in the mRNA consists of three nucleotides that specifically specify a particular amino acid or a stop signal. Then amino acylation of tRNA. Amino acylation is a process by which an amino acid is attached to its corresponding tRNA. This is catalyzed by amino acyl tRNA synthetase which recognize both the amino acid and the appropriate tRNA and link them together. tRNA identity. Each tRNA is specific for a particular amino acid and has a unique anticodon sequence that allows it to pair with the appropriate codon in the mRNA. The correct pairing of tRNA and mRNA codons is essential for the 
ആക്യുറേറ്റ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ജെനറ്റിക് കോഡ് ദെൻ ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ പ്രൂഫ് റീഡിംഗ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ പ്രൂഫ് റീഡിംഗ് ഇസ് ദ പ്രോസസ് ബൈ വിച്ച് എറേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ആർ കോറലേറ്റ് കറക്റ്റഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻവോൾവ്സ് ദ ബൈൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് ആൻ ഇൻ കറക്റ്റ് അമിനോ അസൈൽ ടി ആർ എൻ ഇ ടു ദി എ സൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ റൈബോസോം ഫോളോഡ് ബൈ എ കൺഫർമേഷണൽ ചേഞ്ച് ദാറ്റ് ട്രിഗേഴ്സ് ദി റിലീസ് ഓഫ് ഇൻ കറക്റ്റ് ടി ആർ എൻ എ ആൻഡ് ദ സബ്സിക്വൻറ്റ് ബൈൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് ദ കറക്റ്റ് ടി ആർ എൻ എ ദെൻ ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ ഇൻഹിബിറ്റേഴ്സ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ ഇൻഹിബിറ്റേഴ്സ് ആർ കോമ്പൗണ്ട്സ് ദറ്റ് ഇൻറ്റർഫിയർ വിത്ത് ദി പ്രോസസ് ഓഫ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ സം ആൻറ്റിബയോട്ടിക്സ് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ വർക്ക് ബൈ ബൈൻഡിങ് ടു ദി റൈബോസോം ആൻഡ് പ്രിവെൻറ്റിങ് ദി അലോങ്ങേഷൻ ഫേസ് ഓഫ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ദെൻ പോസ്റ്റ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ മോഡിഫിക്കേഷൻ പോസ്റ്റ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ മോഡിഫിക്കേഷൻ റെഫേഴ്സ് ടു ദി കെമിക്കൽ മോഡിഫിക്കേഷൻസ് ദാറ്റ് ഒക്കെ ടു പ്രോട്ടീൻസ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ബീൻ സിന്തസൈസ്ഡ് ദിസ് ക്യാൻ ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ദി അഡീഷൻ ഓഫ് വാരിയസ് ഫംഗ്ഷണൽ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് സെറ്റ് ആസ് ഫോസ്ഫോറിലേഷൻ ഗ്ലൈക്കോസിലേഷൻ ഓർ അസറ്റൈലേഷൻ വിച്ച് ക്യാൻ അഫക്റ്റ് ദി പ്രോട്ടീൻ സെബിലിറ്റി സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ലോക്കലൈസേഷൻ ഓവറോൾ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ദ പ്രോസസ് ഓഫ് പ്രോട്ടീൻ സിന്തസിസ് ആൻഡ് വാരിയസ് ഫാക്ടേഴ്സ് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എസെൻഷ്യൽ ഫോർ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് സെല്ലുലാർ ബയോളജി ആൻഡ് ഡിസീസ് പ്രോസസ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ടോപ്പിക് കൺട്രോൾ ഓഫ് ജീൻ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ അറ്റ് ട്രാൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ലെവൽ സൊ കൺട്രോൾ ഓഫ് ജീൻ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഇസ് എ ഫണ്ടമെൻ്റൽ പ്രോസസ് ഇൻ ആൾ ലിവിംഗ് ഓർഗാനിസംസ് ഇറ്റ് എനേബിൾ സെൽസ് ടു റെസ്പോണ്ട് ടു ദിയർ എൻവയോൺമെൻറ്റ് ഡെവലപ്പ് സ്പെഷ്യലൈസ്ഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ഹോമിയോസ്റ്റേസസ് ജീൻ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ക്യാൻ ബി റെഗുലേറ്റഡ് ബൈ ഇറ്റ് ബോത്ത് ട്രാൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷനൽ ആൻഡ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷനൽ ലെവൽ റെഗുലേറ്റിംഗ് ദ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫേസ്റ്റസ് വൈറസസ് പ്രൊ കാരിയോട്ടിക് ആൻഡ് യു കാരിയോട്ടിക് ജീൻസ് ഫേസ്റ്റസ് ആൻഡ് വൈറസസ് ക്യാൻ റെഗുലേറ്റ് ജീൻ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ത്രൂ അവർ ഐറ്റ് ഓഫ് മെഗാനിസംസ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡിംഗ് ട്രാൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷനൽ റെഗുലേഷൻ and translational regulation and post translational modification prokaryotic gene expression is controlled mainly at the transcriptional level the regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes involve the use of operons which are clusters of genes under the control of single promoter the expression of this operons is controlled by various factors such as transcriptional activators and repressors sigma act factors and small regulatory rnas in contrast eukaryotic gene expression is regulated at both the transcriptional and post transcriptional levels transcriptional regulation involves the use of enhancers and silencers chromatin modifications and the binding of transcriptional factors to dna post transcriptional regulation involves mrna processing transporter stability and translation the role of chromatin in gene expression and gene silencing Chromatin is a complex of DNA and proteins that make up the structure of chromosomes. Chromatin structure plays a crucial role in genetic expression and gene silencing. The same basic unit of chromatin is the nucleosome which is composed of DNA wrapped around a core of histone proteins. Changes in chromatin structure can lead to changes in gene expression. Chromatin can exist in two states, euchromatin and heterochromatin. Euchromatin is loosely packed and associated with activity transcribed genes while heterochromatin is tightly packed and associated with silenced genes. Chromatin structure can be modified by various enzymes including histone acetyltransferase and histone deacetylase which add or remove acetyl groups from histone tails respectively. Other modifications include methylation, phosphorylation and ubiquitination of histone proteins. The regulation of gene expression is important. for a variety of biological process including development differentiation and response to environmental stimuli this regulation of gene expression can lead to a variety of diseases including cancer and genetic disorders understanding the mechanism of gene regulation is therefore essential for the developing new treatment for this diseases in addition the ability to control gene expression is important in biotechnology where it is used to produce recombinant proteins and genetically modified organisms next host parasite recognition host pathogen interactions are dynamic relationship between the invading pathogen and the host 